Design is clean and modern with a coherent color scheme that aligns with a tech professional vibe. The use of illustrations adds a friendly and approachable feel to the site. The vi they're vibrant and give a good visual representation of services or content you're offering. Header navigation. The top navigation bar is clear and defined sections such as article, membership, and benefits and about us. This will help visitors quickly find what they're looking for. The dual join our Facebook group, call to action buttons, and navigation bar and main header are consistent, emphasizing the primary action you want visitors to take. Hey everyone, this is Jordan Respect Podcast. If you love new tech and believe in its ability to improve our society, this is your show. If you hate those people who invite you to a restaurant and then proceed to order all of these hors d'oeuvres that no one eats and that you didn't want, but now you have to split a check with them and it's going to cost you like an arm and a leg, then this is your show. If you are that person who enjoys buying all those hors d'oeuvres and bankrupting your friends, you're a terrible person and this isn't your show. I just got access to ChatGPT's new functionality of giving it the ability now to go through your images and give you feedback on them and whatnot. And so I thought I would do an open demo. So let's play around. First one is I'm putting an image here of a, this is a random customer service transcript and I wanted to judge the quality of it. Hey, can you look at this customer service transcript and let me know how the customer service agent did in terms of polite, politeness, helping the customer, etc. The agent was consistently polite throughout the conversation. They used respectful and courteous language, such as please, thank you, and one more please. They also demonstrated patience by asking clarifying questions. The agent was proactive in helping the customer. Uh, upon understanding the issue, they quickly took action to resolve the problem. They also double-checked to make sure the solution worked for the customer. Efficiency, the agent seemed to resolve the issue in a timely manner, as indicated by the chatter feedback. All seems to be working now. Thanks very much. Closing interaction, the agent ended the conversation with a positive note expressing gratitude for the chat. Overall, the customer service agent did an excellent job in terms of politeness and assisting the customer. This is also confirmed by the chatter's feedback at the end. Cool. I also have custom instructions in here. Let me just get rid of these. Cool. Um, let's do this. Can you look at my YouTube thumbnail and give me feedback? The Create LLM with only a single prompt is a clear and large and easy to read. The contrast of white text on teal background makes it stand out. The use of all caps also adds emphasis. Graphic icons. The flowchart diagram on the left effectively conveys a process which could intrigue viewers curious about how the single prompt process works. The icon provided a visual representation of the process making the content seem approachable. Color scheme. Teal background is vibrant and eye-catching, which can help with thumbnails out among uh, videos of YouTube. The consistent color palette creates a cohesive, fresh to look. Personal reaction. The individual on the right side, that's Joe, of the thumbnail, presumably expressing surprise or amazement, adds human element and emotional context. Such reaction can draw viewers in. The thumbnail strikes a balance between Informer graphics and emotional appeal. The combination can intrigue both viewers looking for educational content and draw by personal reactions. Suggestions of improvement. Ensure the person's reaction is contextually relevant to the video context. If the video is in particular surprising or shocking, this reaction may set in correct expectations. Always consider mobile users. While the text size seems adequate, ensure it remains illegible on smaller screens. Overall, the thumbnail is visually appealing and communicates the topic effectively. Thumbnails play a significant role in attracting viewers. Well done. Thank you. Okay, this is a photo... Actually, let's just say, what do you think of this photo? It's bell peppers from my garden. Uh, the photo showcases a healthy-looking pepper plant growing in, in a garden setting. Here are some observations and feedback. Subject, the pepper plant with its lush green leaves and developing fruit is the main subject of the photo. Bell peppers are good focus on showcase the vibrant color. Composition, the metal cage provides structure to the image leading the viewer's eyes from the top of the image down, the fruits of the soil. Background, wooden fence to the background adds texture and contrast to the image lighting. Natural lighting seems to be soft, possibly taken during early morning or late afternoon. No, early morning, correct? There's tag on the ground that provides information about the plant, which could be useful to gardening enthusiasts. However, the aesthetic purpose, it might be better if we're positioned more visibly and or removed entirely to declutter. Okay, so it's giving me like photo feedback, which is dope. Let's see here. I'm going to do it again. But this time, hi, this is a photo of my bell pepper plant. Do you have any feedback on the health of the plant or things I can do better? Here are some observations and feedback about your bell pepper plant. 
okay, I can tell the speed this thing's going, it's not fully optimized yet. If I don't ask it an image related question, just a regular question, fix grammar of this, it's really quick. So they're still probably optimizing this expert. Plant health. Overall, the plant looks healthy with vibrant green leaves developing bell peppers. The foliage appears dense, indicating good growth. The bell peppers are green and robust. They seem developing well with no visible signs of disease and pests. Leaves. Most leaves are vibrant green, suggesting the plant is receiving adequate nutrients. However, there are a few leaves with slight yellow, right? that's one, yellowing or curling at the edges. This could be due to several reasons, including overwatering. It's correct. I was overwatering it. It was not producing enough bell peppers. And then I cut that back and now, boom, bell peppers everywhere. This could be due to several reasons, including overwatering, underwatering, or nutrient deficiencies. Keep a close eye on the watering schedule and ensure soil is well drained. Soil is weeds. The soil appears to be slightly compacted. Okay, around here it's compacted, but down here you can't see it, but I put in fresh soil. I rototilled everything around it. Everything was rototilled, and then I cut, I dug a trench and then put in the current soil plus new potting mix plus some fertilizer so then the roots could easily go in and spread out. Additionally, there are some weeds growing around the base of the plant. Essentially, remove the weeds as they can compete with bell pepper for nutrients and water. Yes, this is a good idea. I need to remove more of the grass around it. Support. The cage is excellent for ensuring the plant doesn't droop as the peppers are grow larger than ever. Tag. There is a plant tag near the base. It's sure it doesn't impede water absorption or get in the way. Mulching. Considering how you layer mulch around the base of the plant, mulch helps retain soil moisture, suppress weeds, and provides a barrier against soil borne diseases. Correct. I should have put redwood chips here. Fertilization. If you haven't done so recently, consider giving the plant a balanced all-purpose vegetable fertilizer. I should have given it vegetable fertilizer, but I haven't. Because I usually, for years, I've been putting chicken manure, and peat moss, and fish emulsion, and rotilling the whole entire area, but I did not put dedicated fertilizer here. Pest and disease infection. Periodically inspect the undersides of the leaves for signs of pests and aphids. You can't see it, but I have a bird feeder over here to the right, and every morning the birds come through and eat everything. It's really good. Inclusion, your bell pepper plant appears to be in good health. Just a few areas of monitor just. Regular care and monitoring should yield nice harvest for bell peppers. Great job. Sweet. What should we do next? Do, do, okay. Can you, can you anal, analyze my website and let me know what, what you, th you think of it? Of course, Jordan. Design the aesthetics. The design, don't tell Joe I mispronounced it that way. That'll be our secret. He always jumps on me because I mispronounce stuff. I'm like, Joe, I'm a freaking idiot. Me. Design and aesthetics. Design is clean and modern with a coherent color scheme that aligns with a tech professional vibe. Hey, it's Jordan from the Sick Podcast. You should support the channel by becoming a supporter. Once you become a supporter, you will then be invited to our private community here on YouTube, which will allow you to see the research me and Joe are reading and also research from other people in the community. It's only $4.99 a month, and it's a really good investment. You should go to your boss and look him straight in the face and be like, hey, I am a man or a woman, and you should invest in my future by giving me $4.99 a month so I can invest in the sick podcast and learn about research. And then your manager will be like, that's a great idea. High five, and then probably promote you on the spot or fire you. But either way, we still get our $4.99, and you still get awesome research, and you can help support the show. Why don't you right now go to our page, click join, and then go to supporter and click join again, and then you can join in on all the research fun. Hope you're enjoying the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to support our show. Talk to you later. Bye. The use of illustrations has a friendly and approachable feel of the site. The vi they're vibrant and give a good visual representation of services or content you're offering. Header navigation. The top navigation bar is clear. In defined sections such as article, membership, and benefits and about us, this will help visitors quickly find what they're looking for. The dual join our Facebook group, call to action buttons, and navigation bar and main header are consistent, emphasizing the primary action you want visitors to take. Take a look at it again. Here it is. This is, I, I actually need to update this. I took this down because we're doing some work on it. Took the search down. Main header content, the headline, all, an investment community for STEM professionals, descriptive and immediately communicates the website's primary focus. The sub head, headline provides more information, emphasizes the unique selling proposition of being the only community run by STEM professionals. Key metrics, showcasing 27,000 followers, 8,000 core students, and 2,182 newsletter subscribers. I actually got to increase all these. Offer social proof, which can build trust and credibility in visitors. Content section. Take control of your financial future section as a good mix of text and imagery, offering visitors more insight into the benefits of joining the community. The description emphasizing the advantage of joining the community, focusing on career growth, strong relationships, and investment assistance. Imagery. The photos of people engaging discussions, sense of community, and real-world interaction. This can be inviting potential members looking for tangible network. Areas of improvement. Mobile optimization. Ensure that the site is mobile responsive, given the rise of mobile browsing. 
testimonies. Consider adding testimonials or success stories from current members. Authentic reviews can be powerful. I have this. I just didn't go to the bottom. Footer. The screenshot doesn't show a footer, but ensure you have an essential links. Consider adding fact section. If you offer any free resources, uh, highlight them prominently to attract people. Cool. Okay. Let's go to this right here. Our membership benefits. Also, you guys should support the show. We have really good be benefits here. For five bucks a month, you can get access to the research papers me and Joe are uh, reading and other insider information. You should join. If you don't have five bucks, give us two ninety nine a month. We really appreciate it. Okay. What do you think of these membership tiers? Watch, well, it's going to dog on me. This is complete rat shit. No one should ever do this. Why would they ever pay for this garbage? <laughs> Come on, chat. GBT, help me. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. And also, make sure to support our show. Memberships clearly be laid out. Here's a breakdown of the structure, feedback in each tier. The design is simple and easy to navigate with consistent format for each tier. The price is up front, making it clear for potential members. Tier names, fan, supporter, coffee club, BB club, and a personal touch, making them more relatable and less transactional. Fan seems to be a basic tier. It's price affordable with much tra tra casual listeners or those who just want to show a token of support. Support 499. It's only two more only two more than the fan tier. Look at ChatGPT saying it's a disc, it's a deal. Get it. Depending on the additional benefits offered, this could be a popular choice for regular listeners. However, it's crucial to clearly list what extra benefits this tier offers over the fan tier. Yes, it should. It's just the way I showed it. Coffee Club, this is significant benefit mentioned. Is loyalty badges next to your name in the comments live chat? For some users, recognition in the community's setting is valuable. For a price that's twice supported tier, you might want to consider adding more tangible exclusives. He doesn't see it, but you get access to videos early. BBQ Club, this is a premium tier, priced significantly higher than the rest. The inclusion of custom emoji use in comment section live chat is a fun touch, but given the price point, pinch room members might expect more exclusive perks. The like exclusive perk is you get to ask me and Joe questions, and we answer them via YouTube videos. Clear value prop, trial periods discount, feedback loop. Allow existing members to provide feedback on the perks. Their insights can be valuable for finding the offerings. Sweet. So basically, it likes everything we had here, just it couldn't see the rest. Well, let's do this. Don't laugh, everyone. Here's a picture of me. Am I properly dressed for work? There's me. I need to sleep more. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's see here. Based on the image you provide, you're wearing a zip-up hoodie and shorts. Correct. Zip-up hoodie, shorts. Um, the hoodie appears to be in good con condition. The small logo on the chest seems unobtrusive. While it's casual, many tech companies or relaxed work environments, hoodie might be considered acceptable. Shorts are generally considered very casual attire. Traditional office settings, shorts are typically not deemed appropriate. However, in a more laid-back environment, especially warmer climates during summer, they might be acceptable. Overall impression, the outfit is casual end of spectrum, where it's suitable for work largely depends on your workplace dress code and culture. Recommendations. If you're unsure about the dress code, it's always a good idea to check with your HR department or refer to an employee handbook. If you want to evaluate the, look, evaluate the look slightly, you could swap the shorts for chinos or slacks. Good call. Consider wearing a polo shirt, button-up shirt instead of an overall hoodie. Consider the type of meetings or interactions you have day-to-day. -day. If you're meeting with clients or higher-ups, you might be wise dressed up more formal. Yeah, you'd never want to meet with clients dressed this way. In summary, while the outfit's casual, might be suitable for work depending on your company's culture and dress code. Always aim to dress slightly above the standards to ensure you're presenting yourself professionally. Here's a funny question. I am going to meet... A, a, I'll think of something else. Okay, let's have it look at... Okay. Here, okay. What do you think of my dog? Does he look healthy? Oh, Duke, you good boy. Yes, you are. He's now like 12, going on 13 years old. Your dog looks lovely and alert in a photo from the image. Coat. The coat appears smooth and the skin looks clear, both of which can be indicators of good health. Eyes. The eyes appear clear and attentive with, without visible discharge, which is a positive sign. Body. Difficult to gauge dog's overall body condition from angle, but he does appear not to be overly thin or overweight. See, Duke? ChatGPT doesn't think you're fat. Posture. The posture seems relaxed. Dog looks alert. Typically a good sign. Paws. Paws look clean and free from visible wounds or infections. However, it's essential to remember that while visual assessments can provide some information, the true health of the pet can be determined by a veterinarian. Yeah, let's see here. Over here, he had a he 
had surgery here to remove he had a tumor got removed luckily it wasn't cancerous so he was good but yeah he's a good boy in good shape let me know what you think in the comment section how good of a boy he is okay okay let's do another plant analysis okay what do you think of my tomato i don't think there's an, an e at the end of tomato is there Come on. Tomato. Yeah. I uh, almost like that Dan Quill guy, guy who put an E at the end of potato. Yeesh. Okay. Yeah, I got sick, so I didn't have time to prune this back, but we'll see what it says. Uh... Oh, it saw the, the tomatoes in your Look, there's barely, you can barely see them. That's some top tier image recognition. Also, the bird feeders I was talking about here are over here. Okay. Um, however, there's some recommendations. Lower leaves. Some of the lower leaves appear to be wilting, showing signs of stress. This could be due to various reasons. I need to print them, actually. Support. Given its size, ensure the branches are adequately supported. Pruning. Consider pruning a plant to allow better air circulation. Remove some of the lower yellowing disease. Soil looks a bit dry in the photo. Ensure consistent watering. It's on drip irrigation, but fair. It doesn't can't see over here. Mulching, consider mulching. Okay, good feedback. Okay. All right. Let's give you people what you want to see. Here is a photo of my shed. I use it for my YouTube background. I think it looks perfect. And like any other shed in America. What do you think? And what do you think about those damn haters who say man man your shed is full of crap and my butt smells blah okay <laughs> here's look things are in, in boxes right here Th nails and things are in there I, okay i'll clean this part off look everything else is organized it's my pvc all my abs stuff some lighting electrical in this section there's more electrical back here more front porch lights then i have all my screws and things like that and then i have more lighting up here and my dogs are running for office rest in peace daisy we miss you duke is still running josie needs her own poster board let me know if you think josie should get one too your shed has a lot of character and a lived in okay fuck it that's bull a lived in feel okay <laughs> That's what women will say. Guys, if they come to your apartment, it's not, it's messy. They'll say, it's very lived in. <laughs> it's interesting. AKA, this thing's a fucking rock you just played. Still a tool, supplies, and various items, which give it a genuine work workshop atmosphere. See, genuine workshop atmosphere. This is a real shit. Here's a breakdown of my thoughts. I think that your shed looks like a typical workspace where actual work gets done. See, this is a working man's shed. There's another YouTube channel where guys like all these brand new craftsmen tool cloth chests that are perfectly waxed and you and their clothes and everything they're all over the place i can't get any work done there it's all bullshit okay hey, your shed looks like a typical workspace especially if you're covering dui topics or discussing unique background the variety of items and the poster of vote for daisy and add a fun and personal touch this can make your videos memorable and give the viewers something interesting to look at in the background while everything seems accessible you might consider organizing certain sections or using label bins for better functionality this is necessary for aesthetics but could make Find it easier. Haters, everyone has an opinion, especially on the internet. As long as you're happy with your setup and it works, that's what matters most. Remember, some viewers might even find the cluttered look relatable since not everyone has a pristine movie set stuff workshop. Damn, people who find it relatable, you're welcome here. Lighting, if you're using a space for filming, ensure you have good lighting. Lighting can make significant difference. Safety, just your note, make sure sharp tools or chemicals are stored safely, especially if children might access shed. Actually, yes, I had varnish and other chemicals right here. And I was taking work meetings, and for a while I was getting woozy, but I didn't know what was going on because I have a terrible sense of smell. And my dad came in, and he was like, Jesus Christ, what's going on in here? And it turns out, like, all the chemicals were, like, were giving off odors and fumes, and so I had to remove them. And then all of a sudden, hey, I'm not woozy anymore in meetings. I can think clearly. Wow, genius. In conclusion, if your shed represents your authentic self and content you're producing, that's perfect for you. Every background tells a story, and it's clear that yours has many tales of work, projects, and personal touches. Keep being you, and remember that you can't please everyone. This is why I pay 20 bucks a month. ChatGPT is my BFF. Thank you, ChatGPT. Anyways, 
those are some quick use cases that you could use for this new functionality. Let me know below what y'all think. I'll probably come up with more use cases as time goes on. You probably get invoices, receipts, you can get manuals put up there, show it something you're trying to fix. Let us know. Like you can ask ChatGPT, okay, based on this manual, how should I fix this? All types of great stuff. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this session. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to support the channel. It means a lot to us. Just $2.99 can help us out a lot. And if you support us for $4.99, you get access to all of our research papers so you can grow your brain and make more money. Anyways, talk to you later. Bye.